previously on Dave Radio Expenses. This is the Tasma Model 1002. It's from 1947. Here's the bottom view and it's not in the best of shape. The wire, all the uh, insulation is just hard, you can't, if I bend that it'll just fall off. Here's the coil and there's the broken wire, it's supposed to wrap around this post here. Before I put this back I'll check continuity again and they're the two I repaired, you know they're okay. I've been in contact with the owner, he said give it the full works, so I'm going to strip all this off. That didn't take long and that's as far as I need to go. I'm going to leave the IF transformers here, I'll put something around to protect them. Now this has red wax on it, so I've got a bit of uh, wax here and I've added a bit of red crayon to it. Hmm, where's my red crown? I've removed all the masking and uh, yeah, it's come up pretty good. I'm back at my desk, I've got most of the parts here I think. First thing I'm going to do is put the covers on these transformers to protect them. Uh, before I do that, I've got to replace that wire. Unfortunately, they've wrapped it to the bit of wire that it connects to. I'll just solder a replacement bit of wire in. I'm just going to try and melt a bit of wax on to <laughs> just to cover it up. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, bit of a dead loss. Yeah, it kind of looks okay. All right. All right, I'll put the can on, and it's just a matter of getting that wire to line up through the hole. And there's a little tab here to bend in, and it just goes underneath the bottom uh, plate on the transformer. Uh, there's four of those, uh, there's one on each side of the each can. I don't think you need to or you even want to watch me put all the nuts and bolts on. So I'm going to fit that on next, I'll bolt that from underneath. The tuning capacitor can go on as well and I can wire that in. So that'll let me wire all this stuff up and replace the wires as I go. I'm going to leave the transformer out because I need to replace the wires around there and it'll be much easier with the transformer out. The speaker I don't need to fit till later on. I'll, I'll flip it over now put all the nuts and bolts on and then we'll come back when I'm ready to start rewiring. I've bolted down the two transformer cans. I've also fitted the capacitor, the tuning capacitor. I didn't put the antenna coil back on because I didn't need to at this stage. This radio is a little unusual. It's got a loom running around the back there and around the side here. Now mostly it's filament voltage and just drops it off at the various valve um, sockets. Now surprisingly it's been laced, um, which not something you see all the time. So my idea is to remove this loom as one piece and then try and replicate it and fit it back into the radio. But in this area here, it is so packed with uh, components I can't even see where the wires go. I want to try and clear the area out here without disconnecting too much. So this big capacitor could go, but I'll leave his wire on there so I can find out where he goes later on. So I'll just cut that. Oops. This is a shield that's carrying the volume control wires. I've unsoldered it from its two ends there. It's got a wire there and it was soldered onto the back of the volume control down this end. So that's free. If I take the volume control off, I can just move this away. So that should come out now. All right, so I can get that out of the way. There's a tab strip here. I can take that out as well and hopefully move that away. I think it's got some of the wires attached to it. I can see the loom now, so it's fairly straightforward. I think I can get the loom out now, but I've got to work out a way of tagging all the wire ends where they go. So I'll have a think about that. I've disconnected all the wiring from its solder points um, and marked them with little bits of green tape and just put a, a name on it. Uh, if it goes to a valve, I put the valve number and the pin number, so should be okay. I think I can get it out. I have to slide it out. There's some components over the wire up there.
Well, there it is. That was pretty easy. <laughs> All I have to do now is just replicate it. It shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. So I'll get started on that. I'm going to attempt to reproduce this loom again. Uh, I've got plenty of coloured wire. Now I made a list of colours that I thought were used on radios and I've had this for a little while and added to it as I went along. And then I found uh, this little chart on radio days. And it actually lined up pretty well with what I had. I had a couple of things wrong and I added to my little list from here as well. So I've printed this out and this is quite handy I think. Now you're probably wondering like I am, how's he going to do this? Now when they made this they would have had a little board, they would have laid it out. I played all the wires, just laced it up and I knew where everything went. I don't have that. So what I'm going to do, I think, is use tie wraps. So I've got a tie wrap on there now. I'll just make that the right length and just do the tie wrap up and hold that there. Now this is 5 volt. I'm going to use blue. It says violet, but I haven't got any violet wire. So blue is going to have to do. Now I should be able to hopefully get the lacing in between and just tie off the new wires, I hope. And then I'll go along and cut these um, uh, tie wraps off. I've just run another black wire through and it's joined the blue. This is the ground for the filament so that uh, other wire goes off to ground on the chassis. This one goes around to all the sockets and uh, picks up the ground for the filaments. So I'll continue that on. I've connected my multimeter to the 5 volt filament supply to the rectifier and I'm pretty sure it's this because it says valve 4 pin 8 so that's that's yeah that's one of them. So that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I pulled the wire out and didn't just go past. I'm going well so far. I had a mistake in the middle here which I've rectified now. Um, it got very confusing in the center here. If you think it looks a mess now, wait till it's finished. I mean, wait until it's finished. So I'll just do these last few wires and uh, we can start doing the uh, cord wrapping. I'm going to have a go at lacing this loom together. And the first thing you do is start with a clove hitch, if I remember. I worked in the airline industry, so uh, we did do this, but uh, this wasn't my trade, so I didn't do very much of it. And it was generally me just watching the electricians or someone showing me. Yeah, that's a clove. There we go. That's all right. <laughs> all right, so... And I think we used to put a double knot on the top. Something like that. Oops. All right. And if you pull that like that. Now the next knot's got to be here. I'll just get rid of this tie wrap. Then you went underneath. And then you brought that over and went through the loop like that, I think. That's it. Now I'll do another one here. Just to pick up this black wire here. And same deal again through there. Oh, yeah, that's it. So that's that's those two done. That looks pretty good so far. I'll continue on down the run, and uh, I'll get back and give you progress reports as I go along. So far, so good. I had a little trouble here, uh, making sure all the wires got out of the loom in the right places, uh, but got through that eventually. And uh, there's another little area here, but I've finished that as well. So. I'm actually just down to the two wires that are for the uh, filament voltage and I've just got to do that last bit along here. All right, I've got to the end now so I've just got to do a finishing knot and I looked up our local uh, aviation authority website and they had how you're supposed to do it and I should have done a double clove hitch at the start. So I'm going to do that now to finish. So the only difference is you do two um, laps of the string around the wire. That's got to come up there somewhere. And that's about where it needs to be. Yeah. Alright. Good. 
All right, that it says pull a bit of the string out there and go through twice. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty happy with that. There'll be there's different ways of doing it. It'll be Boeing and NASA and you know, McDonnell Douglas, whatever. I have different ways of doing it. Probably, maybe not. Uh, so don't bother too much if it's if I haven't done it the way you normally do it. Uh, and this lacing cord is weird. It's a plastic stuff. It won't grip itself. It's pretty ordinary. I've put a dot of super glue on there, and that seems to work pretty well. All right, the next thing I want to do is make up new stickers, and I'll put it on the new pieces of wire, and then I will buzz out the new loom and make sure it's exactly the same as the old loom. All right, I've put tags on everything. I'm going to cut all these um, tie wraps off. There we go. Well, there's my new loom. Um, I hope it fits. As I said, I'm going to spend five minutes with my multimeter. I'll just buzz all these wires out, make sure they correspond exactly with the old loom. And then I'll put it back in the radio. I checked my loom with a multimeter and it's fine. So I'm just going around now and replacing wires I can get to with the loom out. Uh, so I've changed one there and there. Uh, this one's changed. And I need to replace ones like this. These two resistors here in parallel supply a screen voltage for the mixer and the IF amp. So they're both reading about 22.5k each. Um, they're 20k resistors. I'm going to replace them with 22k anyway because that's the only ones you can get now. But I'll change them anyway. I've got to disconnect both ends to change the capacitors and the wire here. So I'll just do that. So I'm going to go through here and just change whatever wires I can while I can. And then I'll come back and I'll put the loom in. Here's another half time report. I've tested all the resistors in here and they're all okay. There was three here that I replaced. They were out of tolerance. I changed these two capacitors. They uh, were soldered on the same points as these resistors, so I'll change them while they're disconnected anyway. Uh, there's another capacitor here I've changed because the resistors uh, were soldered in here. Now because I've taken so much stuff out and put smaller components in, uh, this fits much better. So I should be able to get that in there. I can drop it down. I didn't have to pull it out like I did, uh, like slide it out of I me. Mean. So I think what I might do is I'll start at one end and just come along and just do one at a time and pick them up as I get there. If I need to unravel something, I can still pull it out. I, I don't think that I've done it wrong. I checked it so many times. So once again, I'll just do it off camera, but I'll come back and show you how it's progressing. I've put the loom in and it went in very well. Um, it all lined up. I just soldered them into position and that was it. It was done. And I wired in some new wires for the die lighting. I think the next thing to attack is the transformer. I might put that in. All right, let's put her in. Okay, the transformer's in. Um, this one is the five volt uh, tapping. So there's the five volt tapping there. There's the secondary tapping, and I think that's the center tap. And this is the 6.3 volt tapping for the filaments. That will go there. So that goes on there as well. So that's 5 volts. Now these two here are the secondary, so they just go here. Wouldn't matter which way you put them, like that. And that's the filament, I assume. It's for brown, so yeah, 6.3. That looks a bit long, that one. I might have to trim that one. So give me a second. I'll replace all this wiring and wire this side up. All right, that's all done. Oh, I've left his little tag on. Um, but that's all done. Uh, there's the three wires with the power on it. And there's the ground for the... No, that's the active for the 6.3 volts. So um, the only thing to do now is the other end down here. And uh, there's not much to do on that. I'll have a look now. All right, let's have a look. Uh, there's the 6.3 volts that go to the filaments. So that one goes on there. Now there's the there's two wires there and the other ones are ground. So that goes over here if I can get it over there. There it is. So that goes over there. And this is the five that goes there. So that's easy. Uh, this is the power input into the transformer. So 240, 220, and that's the common. 
All right, I'll solder those up and I'm getting a bit excited because we're getting close to uh, testing this out. All right, this side's done as well, so we get rid of that. So that's wired up. Uh, still got to put the uh, power in yet, but uh, I'll do that a bit later. I think the next thing to do is put this back wall together. Uh, there's a little round um, tab strip there, or whatever you would call it. And this has to go back up on the back wall there too. All right, I'll bolt those back in and uh, connect some of these wires up. And then that'll be it for the day, I think. All right, that's all done now. Well, I've run out of time. It's getting very late now. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will fit this um, aerial back in, the aerial coil. Wire that all up in here. There's some wires to replace down here still. I've got to put the volume control back in and wire it up. And then I think we can put some power on and test it, see if it blows up or works or what it's going to do. Alrighty, I'll see you in the morning. I wonder where that goes. Well, good morning. I'm back again and we're on the home stretch with this one. I'll just finish off the items I outlined last night and we'll give it a run. Right, everything's back together I've put all the valves in I checked everything twice but there's still the chance there's a mistake there somewhere so I'm a little bit nervous but I'll have to do it at some stage it's plugged in I've got it on dim bulb it's on 239 volts on uh, and I'm gonna put it on we'll just see what happens if it smokes and go can see valves warming up can't see any smoke no it doesn't work put my finger on there there's nothing there is absolutely no sound I'll turn it off I found the problem immediately, no sound, something wrong with the speaker, yeah look, I haven't connected the output transformer up, and I haven't connected the humbucker on, there it is there, the wire. That's pretty poor quality control, I'll be talking to the quality control manager. Oh! Uh, in the meantime I'll connect all this up and I think we'll probably have a go. I've soldered the wires back on so I'll give it another shot, so I'm fairly confident it's going to work, nothing looked uh, out of place in the electrical part of it we've got some glows in the valves there well once again i can hear a hum now uh, so the speaker's working uh we're only at 188 volts um it seems to be pulling a bit more power than it should there's no sound coming through the amplifier stage or this last if i'll just give it a bit more power see if we can get up to yeah that globe's going pretty bright I've flipped it upside down. These leads go off to the volume control. So if I touch those, I should get a buzz through the amp and there's nothing there. So the issue is somewhere between here and the amplifier. I've just put my multimeter on. I'll see what voltages we're getting. Uh, so we've got 138 on the rectifier. Um, where's that going? That's B plus coming back and we've got, I only got 31. Uh, something wrong somewhere. So that'll be the same, that's the screen, uh, that's the plate, got 85 on the plate. I'm putting in 190 volts here, we should get about 250 volts out. Alright, I'll turn it off, I'm going to check everything again, make sure I've wired everything correctly. 
Now before I do that, what I will do is take these two valves out, the mixer and the um, the IF amp valve. See if that gives us enough voltage to uh, get the amplifier to work. So I've still got 132 with those out. It's still pulled it down to 197 on the input. So. All right, so that would indicate that the fault's in the amplifier. I've spent a considerable amount of time looking at the circuit. I cannot find anything wrong with it. I can't find any mistakes. Everything adds up perfectly. So to break it down, I've taken out the output valve. I've taken out the speaker plug. So this is a different 5Y3 rectifier. I'll just put it on. We'll see what it does. Now I've got the voltage set a bit higher. So as you would expect, there's not much happening. It's powering the rectifier and that's all. So that's okay. So if I put the plug back in the speaker, all right, I'll try that. Now that light's coming on and it's staying on. We're pulling 40 watts. Okay. Um, now, of course, that doesn't mean it's the speaker. It's, it may be off supplying something else. To illuminate the speaker, I'll just um, buzz it out, make sure everything's okay in there. Then we'll move on to the next bit. I've got a clip on the black one there. The yellow and black are the field coil. And we should get about 1.5k areas. 1.6k, that's right. And the blue and the red one are the output transformer, and that should be about 500 ohms. Yeah, 500 ohms, there you go. I've just put the other end of the probe onto a screw, and it's got continuity. It shouldn't do that. Uh, so that would indicate there's a short in the output transformer to ground. There's the output transformer and there's the two wires going in and they were pretty much just bare wires. So I've put some heat shrink on it, pushed it in as far as I could and I wonder if it's shorting out inside there somewhere. All right, I've got the meter connected to these two wires on the plug there and I'll just move them around. It's not changing that. No? Okay. I've disconnected the uh, red wire out of the plug. I'll just touch it on a ground point. And there's the 496. So if I put it on there, we should read a dead short. There it is, dead short. So that red wire is shorting out inside the case there. Well, in that case, I'll take the transformer out again, see if I can get that cardboard uh, base there off and see what's going on. I've demounted the transformer. I've got the multimeter connected to the case and the red wire, and uh, the, the, the fault's gone. <laughs> so I don't want to ruin this transformer. But I'll get this off here. Uh, okay. All right, I'm at a loss. I don't know how that would ever short to the case. It's just not close to it, so I don't know. I'll put some hot glue on it, get it away from the case, put some hot glue on it, uh, put this back on, and I'll remount it and just see if the fault comes back. I just put the hot glue gun on and I thought I'll put the multimeter on while I glue it in so that I don't glue in a fault. And now it's got 15 ohms of resistance between the red wire and the case. So something's not right. I don't think it's this wire. That's just nowhere near anything. Oh, wait on. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, now it's fixed. If I pull on it, it goes away. I'm going to try and dig away at this a little bit to see what's going on. I don't want to try and pull this out of the case if I can help it. I think what's happening is this insulation's failed and it was lying on the uh, core here of the transformer. So now I've got to think of a way of insulating it so it doesn't happen again. I've got a bit of insulation board here. I'll see if I can get that in there. Now 
that'll keep it off the metal core there. If I fill that up now with high temperature hot glue, that should fix it I think. And we're still reading open circuit on the multimeter there. Well, I'll see how that goes. The uh, multimeter is still showing open loop, so I guess we're okay. I'm ready to try it again. I said a few times, so I'm very confident, so I'm not going to say it this time. So I've just got the rec. Oh, it's crackling. Just got the rectifier in. The bulb's behaving perfectly. The speaker is plugged in. Yeah, I think we've. I think we've got it. So I'm going to put all the valves back. Well, hard to believe as it is, I forgot to do these wires again. Can you believe that? So they're not going to do that. Okay, let me solder those up. All right, let's try it this time. Many of these MPs actually think that they're on a crusade and they become completely focused on the crusade. Alright, it's really hard to tune with this just using this, so that's why I'm having trouble. There's now been a fourth woman come forward who in some form or another she was sexually assaulted or allegedly sexually assaulted by a, a Liberal Party staffer. Now the police have to investigate this, these matters. Effectively, bosses have a huge amount of power and bosses are still predominantly male and that's changing. There's more females in Parliament that's having a, an incredibly um, positive effect over the last 20 years that I've been. Inside a huge queue for a chance to win a quarter of a million dollars. Tomorrow on Sand. Look at that. I've been heaps of PP points. Maybe we can use them to get a sandwich? Yeah, okay. Can I get a packet of chips as well? Uh, sure. Alright, well that's working. And if it hadn't been for me not soldering and that not being shorted out, it would have worked straight up. I'll put this tuner section back on with the spindle and the pulley and uh, then I can do a very, very quick alignment. I'm not going to worry too much about the alignment. And uh, we'll be about done, I think. Just very quickly want to check the alignment of this. The IF alignment frequency on this is 458 instead of the normal 455. I've got my signal generator set up. As usual I've gone into the grid of the mixer valve through a 0.01 capacitor. I've got my meter here, it's set on AC. It's connected to the plate via a 0.01 capacitor as well. I've also set up the dummy speaker. Alright, let's see what we've got. Well, there's the signal kill that noise. Alright, so I'm just going to adjust the signal generator to get maximum deflection on the needle. Okay, so we got 461, so it's a little bit out. Alright, I'll set this back to 458. That'll do, it's close enough. Uh, two of the adjusters are up the top here, so I'll adjust those to get maximum deflection. So we're tuning into the correct IF frequency now. about that one all 
Right, that's that one. I've got to flip the radio up to get to the other two. There's the other one. I'll, I'll switch to a plastic adjuster just to be a bit safer. I'm getting a bit out of that one. Okay. All right, I'm on the last one here. We'll just see what we get out of that one. Nothing. So I haven't adjusted that really. I rechecked the uh, top IFs again in the bottom and then back up the top and uh, they're pretty spot on. Now just quickly check the dial alignment. As I said earlier, the owner kept the pointer and the dial glass. So I've made a little pointer here with some wire and a bit of heat shrink. So that should work. And I've taken the glass out of my radio. All right, I've fitted my dial on here. Uh, there's no frequency markings, but 7ZL is 600. So if I put that on 600, and as you can see, 600 could be anywhere there. It's very thick pointer and it's a very thick tolerance on the stations. I'll just flick the generator up to 600. It's close enough. I'll turn the radio on to see where we are. Oh, there it is there. It's slightly off. Although, um, what's it? Well, the point is pointing to 7ZL on the inside, isn't it? I was centering it between here and here, so coming up here, maybe you should do that. Yeah. All right. Um, what I'll do is put it on another station that I know is up the other end of the band, and we'll see if it lines up there. I've set it to 3AK, and I'm pointing to it with that part of the pointer there. Now, 3AK is 1500. It's close enough. All right, I'll turn the speaker on. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that's perfect. Speaker off. All right, well, that's perfect. That's pointing directly at 3AK and it's 1500, so the whole thing's perfect, actually. Uh, there's no adjustment anyway. The only one that has an adjustment is the padder on the uh, tuner. Uh, that's the uh, aerial coil that I pulled out, the red one. And there's an adjustment on that, and that's all. Well, that alignment came out perfect. There's a couple of small things to do, and it's finished. I've printed out a new Arts and P uh, patent sticker. These were on all Aussie radios to cover the patents for the various patents in the radio. And that's the original number that was on the radio. I painted this output transformer. It had 5,000 for the uh, resistance of the transformer. So I'll just put it back on again. Now, if you remember this red valve here, this is an EBF35. It was very discolored. Uh, it still tests all right, and the envelope's still solid in the base. This is my valve, and I used it to do the troubleshooting on the radio because I know it works. But I want to refit the original valve. So I, what I did was paint it, and I painted it with engine enamel. And the enamel's rated at 500 degrees, so temperature won't be a problem. I think that looks pretty good, though. No, it's not a bad match. I've rubbed the gloss off with some rather coarse automotive polish just to make it look aged and get rid of the gloss. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'll put this one back in before I send the radio back to the owner. This is a Tasma Model 1002. It was built in Sydney in 1947. And it's come up very nice. If the owner can make the cabinet look nice, uh, this will be a very uh, nice-looking radio. And, it, and it's working very well as well, if I turn really it up. up to what your, what your expectations were. You were spot on. It's, it's so interesting because, like, we... Classic Hits 4KQ's 9 to 5 No Repeat Work Day. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you tomorrow I'll miss you Remember. Oops, they're playing a little bit long. Hang on. Really not tennis players who start at such a young age that's yeah, the decision uh, once we sort of got him out this morning and, and uh, went through everything and went over him it was yeah it was pretty easy to make i had a lot of fun with this radio and i hope you enjoyed watching me work on it and i hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure <laughs>